May I have the honor of Professor Dr. Klaus Martin Schwab to sign the visitor's book. May I invite Chulalongkorn University President, Professor Dr. Pirom Kamon Ratanakun, to present an academic gown to Professor Dr. Klaus Martin Schwab. And may I also invite Vice President, Associate Professor Dr. Jesada Sang Supan, and Vice President, Professor Dr. Kea Wong Bun Sin, to assist investing Professor Schwab with the academic gown. May I invite Vice President, Assistant Professor Dr. Mamrachawong Galaya Tingsapat to read the citation in Thai and Dr. Pongsak Hudragoon to read the citation in English. Please. Dui Sapa Jula Lungkorn Maha Vitya Lai Nakai Brachum Krang Tea. 743 เมื่อวันที่ 29 มีนาคมพุทธศักราช 2555 ได้พิจารณาเห็นว่าศาสตราจารย์ Dr. Klaus Martin Schwab เป็นนักวิชาการและนักบริหารการศึกษาที่มีผลงานโดดเด่นเป็นที่ยอมรับของหน่วยงานภาครัฐและธุรกิจเอกชนเพื่อเป็นเกียรติและแบบอย่างที่ดีสืบไปเดอะ University เดอะจุลาลงกรณ์ University Council at its 743rd meeting on the 29th of March 2012 consider it suitable to recognize Professor Dr. Klaus Martin Schwab for his outstanding contribution to the academic and business world, regionally and globally, and deem him worthy of honor as an assembly role model. Sastrajan Dr. Klaus Martin Schwab, Samrat Gan Suksa, Radab Dusudi Bandit Sakha Vicha Setasat, Geniyom, Jag Maha Vicha Lai Freiburg. ประเทศสหพันธสหพันธสาธารณรัฐเยอรมนีและดุษฎีบัณฑิตสาขาวิชาวิศวกรรมศาสตร์จากสถาบันเทคโนโลยีของสมาพันธรัฐสวิสนอ
the United States of America. Sir Ajahn Dr. Klaus Martin Schwab, Ben Ajahn Son Sakavichasetasad, Team Havichelai Geneva, Rates of Mapantarat Swiss, Rowang B. Song Panharoi Sipha, Ting Song Panharoi Sisipsi, Sit Sot Sisipha, Let Dai Rap Tang Tang, Hai Ben Sastrajan, Nai Visha Nio Bai Turkit, Nai Chung Tison Yunan, Sastrajan Dr. Klaus Martin Schwab, Dai Kien Tamra Lai Lem, ได้ประยุกต์การวิเคราะห์เชิงเศรษฐศาสตร์ในโลกของธุรกิจและได้สร้างทฤษฎีผู้มีส่วนเกี่ยวข้องโดยมีหลักการพื้นฐานว่าองค์กรธุรกิจจะต้องดูแลรับผิดชอบไม่เฉพาะแต่ผู้ถือหุ้นเท่านั้นแต่จะต้องรับผิดชอบต่อผู้เกี่ยวข้องอื่นๆเช่นพนักงานลูกค้าผู้ขายอุปกรณ์การผลิตตลอดจนสังคมและภาครัฐที่องค์กรนั้นดาเนินกิจการอยู่ด้วยเนื่องจากความสนใจอย่างแรงกล้าในด้านสวัสดิการของสังคมโลกศาสตราจารย์ดรคลาสมาตินชวบจึงได้ก่อตั้งสมัชชาเศรษฐกิจโลก World Economic Forum ขึ้นเมื่อปีพุทธศักราช2514โดยได้เชิญผู้สนใจกว่า400คนมาร่วมประชุมด้วยเห็นว่าองค์กรนี้จะสามารถทำหน้าที่เป็นกาวเชื่อมต่อระหว่างผู้เกี่ยวข้องในทุกภาคส่วนของสังคมองค์กรนี้ได้สำรวจเศรษฐกิจของแต่ละประเทศโดยมีศาสตราจารย์ดรคลาสมาตินชวบเป็นผู้ออกแบบวิธีวิทยาการวัดความสามารถในการแข่งขันของแต่ละประเทศทั้งในด้านการผลิตและความยั่งยืนในการพัฒนาเศรษฐกิจโดยมีวัตถุประสงค์ที่จะพัฒนาเสริมสร้างความเจริญก้าวหน้าทั้งในด้านเศรษฐกิจและสังคมในระดับโลกและสามารถจัดพิมพ์เผยแพร่รายงานระดับความสามารถในการแข่งขันในระดับโลกของ142ประเทศทั่วโลกได้เป็นครั้งแรกในปี2522รายงานดังกล่าวสามารถประเมินศักยภาพเปรียบเทียบระหว่างประเทศในด้านการผลิตความสามารถในการแข่งขันและการพัฒนาสังคมระหว่างประเทศให้เป็นผลสำเร็จเป็นที่ยอมรับทั้งจากภาครัฐและภาคเอกชนในแต่ละประเทศทั่วโลกตั้งแต่ปี2549เป็นต้นมาได้มีรายงานผลการสำรวจเป็นประจำทุกปีในกรณีของประเทศไทยได้ดำเนินการสำรวจโดยสถาบันบัณฑิตบริหารธุรกิจสะสินร่วมกับสถาบันเพื่อการวิจัยและพัฒนาแห่งประเทศไทย TDRI Dr. Schwab taught economics and was appointed professor of business policy at the University of Geneva From 1972 to 2002, while in Geneva, Professor Dr. Schwab have written several books. He developed the stakeholder theory, which states that company serve not only shareholder but all the stakeholder as well: employee, customer, supplier, the state and the society in which the enterprise is active. Based upon such great interest in public affairs of the world, he found the World Economic Forum in 1971, when he brought together over 400 participants for a conference. Thus, he saw that the WPF can be the glue between different stakeholders in society he developed a methodology to measure competitiveness of various countries, not only in terms of productivity, but also in terms of sustainability criteria. The Global Competitiveness Report was first published in 1979 and subsequently have covered the report on competitiveness of 142 countries of the world. The report provides an assessment of global potentials in terms of production, competitiveness, and social development, earning the acceptance from both the private and government sector from countries all over the world. Since 2006, reports on the research findings have been regularly presented on an annual basis. In case of Thailand, the survey has been conducted by the Sassin Graduate Institute 
of Business Administration of Chula Long Khan in collaboration with the Thailand Development Research Institute or TDI. สมัชชาเศรษฐกิจโลกเป็นองค์กรไม่สแสวงหากำไรที่มีบทบาทสำคัญยิ่งในการอุทิศตนเพื่อบำเพ็ญประโยชน์ต่อส่วนรวมในระดับโลกองค์กรนี้สามารถเชิญผู้นำประเทศต่างๆทั่วโลกรวมทั้งผู้นำของภาคธุรกิจเอกชนองค์กรสื่อและองค์กรอิสระจากเกือบทุกประเทศทั่วโลกมาร่วมประชุมที่เมืองดาวอสประเทศสมาพันธรัฐสวิสเพื่อแลกเปลี่ยนความคิดเห็นและประสบการณ์ตลอดจนชักนำและเสนอแนะให้ร่วมกันกำหนดทิศทางการพัฒนาสังคมและเศรษฐกิจของโลกเป็นประจำทุกปีนับตั้งแต่ปี2514จนถึงปัจจุบันนอกจากนั้นยังมีการจัดการประชุมระดับภูมิภาคในปีนี้ประเทศไทยร่วมเป็นเจ้าภาพจัดการประชุมสมัชชาเศรษฐกิจโลกสำหรับเอเชียตะวันออกขึ้นที่กรุงเทพมหานครระหว่างวันที่30พฤษภาคมถึง1มิถุนายน2555 World Economic Forum is a non-profit organization dedicated to improving the state of the world by bringing together annually in Davos, a small town in Switzerland, since 1971. Global business, academic, political leaders, and media to discuss economic and social development to determine the world's economic and social direction. Moreover, conferences at the regional level have been organized. In 2012, the World Economic Forum East Asia is being held in Bangkok from May 30th to June 1st, co-hosted by the Thai government. นอกจากบทบาทสำคัญที่เกี่ยวกับสมัชชาเศรษฐกิจโลกแล้วศาสตราจารย์ดรคลาสมาตินชวบยังได้รับแต่งตั้งจากองค์การสหประชาชาติให้เป็นกรรมการในคณะที่ปรึกษาสูงสุดเกี่ยวกับการพัฒนาเศรษฐกิจที่ยั่งยืนโดยดำรงตำแหน่งระหว่างปี 2536-2538 ถึงและเป็นรองประธานกรรมการด้านกระบวนการพัฒนาเศรษฐกิจสังคมแห่งสหประชาชาติระหว่างปี 2539-2541 ถึงในปี2547ศาสตราจารย์ดรคลาสมาตินชอบและภรรยาได้ร่วมกันจัดตั้งมูลนิธิเพื่อพัฒนาผู้นำเยาวชนในระดับโลกอีกด้วยในการนี้ท่านได้อุทิศเงินรางวัลแดนเดวิสไพรส์ที่ได้รับจำนวนหนึ่งล้านเหรียญสหรัฐมาใช้ในการก่อตั้งสมัชชาผู้นำเยาวชนโลก The Forum of Young Global Leaders เพื่อสร้างความมุ่งมั่นร่วมกันในการสร้างอนาคตอันมั่นคงยั่งยืนของโลกแต่ละปีองค์กรนี้ได้คัดเลือกผู้นำเยาวชนที่มีอายุไม่เกิน40ปีและมีความมุ่งมั่นที่จะบำเพ็ญประโยชน์ต่อส่วนรวมในระดับโลกประมาณ 200-300 ถึงคนจากประเทศต่างๆรวมทั้งประเทศไทยไปร่วมประชุมเพื่อร่วมมือหรือประสานงานกันในการกำหนดทิศทางการพัฒนาในบริบทการเปลี่ยนแปลงของโลกในช่วงเวลา5ปีข้างหน้าในปัจจุบันองค์กรต่างๆในหลายประเทศได้เชิญศาสตราจารย์ดรคลาสมาตินชอบไปร่วมงานอาทิศูนย์สันติภาพเปเรสแห่งประเทศอิสราเอลมูนิที่อับราฮัมฮุเซนเพื่องานพิพิธภัณฑ์และวัฒนธรรมแห่งประเทศมาเลเซียเป็นต้น Apart from the very important role in the BUF from 1993 to 1995 Professor Dr. Schwab was appointed member of the UN High Level Advisory Board on Sustainable Development from 1996 to 1998. He was Vice Chairman of the UN Committee for Development Planning. In 2004, Professor Dr. Schwab and his wife create a new foundation, the Forum of Young Global Leader, using one million US dollar prize money from the Dan Davis Prize he received that year to bring together about 300 people under the age of 40 from all over the world, including a number of young prominent leaders from Thailand 
who have demonstrated commitment to improving the state of the world and encourage them to work together over the span of five years to identify and realize global change. He has also been invited to participate as a member of the Perez Center for Priests in Israel and the Abraham Hussein Foundation for Museum and Culture of Malaysia. โดยเหตุที่ศาสตราจารย์ดรคลาวส์มาตินชอบมีผลงานวิชาการโดดเด่นในสาขาวิชาการบริหารจัดการและได้บำเพ็ญประโยชน์เป็นคุณูปการต่
for your contributions to the world of economics and business. But to us, this is a real token that reflects our deep appreciation of your commitments to better this world in terms of economics and social environment. We are so pleased to be able to confer the degree upon you for so many reasons. As cited in the citation before, the World Economic Forum has successfully reached the peak of being a, a world annual event that everyone you know look for every year. And I think the best thing is the success in gathering a diverse group of people to come and join and connect and think of what they can do to better the situation of economics and social as well. I am really impressed with the uh, world, uh, the global competitiveness report. I I really like it because it really tells us you know, where we stand in terms of competitiveness in this world. It also tells us how or on what factors we should improve to climb up the ladder of competitiveness. And that is a real benefit of the report. I'm also impressed with many other things, particularly your philanthropic undertakings. The forum of Global Young Leaders is one very good example. And I can say that if you don't look, you know, and, and facilitate the young people, uh, they are our future. So I'm very pleased that you have taken that initiation and the forum has been very successful. And I hope that all these young leaders will be very efficient in reshaping or shaping the future of this world and help us have a better and uh, a warm situation in this world. Not, not global warm, warming, but, <laughs> but you know, very good um, connection and alliance is well. So upon this um, note, I would like to, uh, on behalf of the distinguished guests in this room, and also on behalf of Joel Nguyen University, its uh, students, its faculty, and its staff, to present you a real sincere congratulations in this honor and to wish you and your family all the best and uh, help this world becoming better. Thank you. have the honor of Professor Dr. Klaus Martin Schwab to deliver an acceptance speech, please. Madam Kon Ying Su Chada, distinguished chairperson of Chula Longkorn University Council, distinguished president, Professor Piram, vice presidents, deans of faculties, professors, distinguished guests, and I should add, friends. I'm delighted to be here in Bangkok, and you do me a great honor in granting me this honorary degree from such a famous university Chulang Longkorn University. Obtaining a university degree is always a moment of intense pride in any scholar's life, at whatever level. But receiving an honorary doctorate, especially when it comes from one of the most respected universities in Asia, and I should add in the world, is a very special event. While this distinction today is normally bestowed to me, I believe it reflects the collective efforts and the achievements 
of all who work at the World Economic Forum. The organization I founded more than 40 years ago with the aim of improving the state of the world. Let me brief, briefly reflect the World Economic Forum's mission statement, committed to improving the state of the world, and share with you some of my thoughts regarding the state of the world today, the challenges we face, and how they may be best addressed, perhaps even turned into your opportunities. Even if we find a lot of pessimism today in the world, we should not forget that the world has made extraordinary economic progress in the last 20 years. Over the past generation, the world has reduced by half the number of people living on less than $1.25 a day, and roughly 500 million people have joined the global middle classes. Extraordinary progress in technology and communications has enabled societies to become much more connected in ways inimaginable to conceive 20 years ago. One third of the world's population is now online, with 45% of users under 25 years old reflecting a growth of 740% in, in the last decade only. 900 million people, or one in eight of the global population, are now on Facebook, which was launched, we should not forget, only in 2004. Today, there are close to 6 billion cell phone subscribers, compared to 12.4 million. In, 2000, in, 1000, uh, 19, in 1992. And of course, this enables great social and economic benefits. The fastest growth since 92 has been in the developing, now the emerging world. Despite the global ramifications of the financial and economic crisis since 2007, the combined output of the emerging world accounts for about 40% of global GDP today, twice the amount compared to 1990. If GDP is instead measured at purchasing power parity, it is estimated that the emerging economies overtook the developed world already in 2008 and are likely to reach 54% of world GDP this year. Emerging economies now account for over half of the global consumption of most commodities, world exports, and inflows of foreign direct investment. Almost a quarter of the Fortune Global 500 firms are now from emerging markets, and it has to be compared with 1995 when it was only 4%. Much of this is a testament to the impact of globalization, innovation from the private sector, and increased engagement of civil society. And all this is evidence of our ability, our human ability, to achieve much more if we work harder together in more innovative and entrepreneurial ways. Clearly, we must achieve much more as the complexity, scale, and scope of the many development challenges we face has grown also since 92. More than a decade into the new century, many of the social and environmental dimensions of the Millennium Development Goals remain unmet. This includes the persistence of hunger and poor nutrition, particularly among children, poor performance in the net enrollment of children in primary education, poor performance in gender equality and empowerment for women and girls, sluggish progress in reducing child mortality and improving maternal health, poor performance in improved sanitation coverage, and non-achievement of universal access to HIV-AIDS drugs despite 
some success in tackling this epidemic. Given persistent economic challenges, particularly in Europe, traditional aid flows are likely to experience further pressure, exacerbating the challenge to improve, to improve delivery on social dimensions of sustainable development. To achieve progress, we have to innovate and build social development models that go beyond public finance in order to have much wider impact at scale. This can only be done by leveraging private initiatives through public-private partnerships or thought or through social entrepreneurship, social entrepreneurship which is very close to my heart. Economically, the issue of jobs and income inequality is an increasingly pressing challenge, particularly for many middle-income countries. We face a 600 million job challenge in the next decade. Today, 200 million people worldwide are unemployed, including 75 million young people, the lost generation, as they are called. 40 million people are estimated to enter the labor force every year into economies that cannot accommodate them. Furthermore, about 900 million workers earn wages less than $2 per day, and 75% of global population have no social protection. There is persistent fear in practically every country, even highly developed, about losing jobs, combined with uncertainty about how to create better quality employment opportunities. The World Economic Forum Global Risk Report 2012 identified societal tensions based on income disparity as a top global risk in terms of likelihood. Never before has the world generated so much wealth while inequality between the richest and the poorest and inside and between states continues to increase. We must find innovative ways to address the employment, inequality and growth issue at scale and quickly if we are to foster socially sustainable development and want to avoid social upheaval in the coming years. Let me shortly look also at the environment. Some argue that a complete rethink of resource management is needed to keep pace with soaring demands across all major resources such as energy, basic materials, food and water. As up to 3 billion people could join the middle class and improved life and consumption patterns over the next 20 years. Global agricultural production will need to increase 70 to 90 percent by 2030. Energy demand is foreseen to rise 40 percent by this time. And under business as usual water management assumptions, a 40 percent global gap between supply and demand is forecast. The interconnected nature of this resource challenge, food, water, energy, also forces us to consider optimizing future resource use within a nexus of interconnected constraints rather than through the siloed approach used until now. To complicate matters, Further, climate change may accelerate and exacerbate some of these resource challenges. Global greenhouse gases emissions have now reached record annual highs, and the International Energy Agency suggests that we are on track for a 3.5 degree Celsius rise in average land temperature by mid-century, with terrible natural disasters as a consequence. The resource and environment challenge can only be solved if industry, a primary driver in resource use and environmental impact, is part of the solution. This means that the best approach for the international community is to establish clear objectives for CO2 emissions, for example, but also 
for industry to become a pioneer in building a greener economy. So what are the conclusions? Today, we are living in a multipolar, hyper-connected and increasingly urbanized world. We face growing income inequalities, job insecurities, social development challenges and unprecedented demand shocks to our natural resource base. We face urgent and interconnected sustainable development challenges which require rapid and scaled responses. Yet, our multilateral approach to these challenges remains unchanged compared to 20, 40 or even 70 years ago when the Bretton Woods arrangements and other international organizations were established. We rely on a nation-state-based negotiation process to resolve our global public good challenges such as trade, climate change, nuclear proliferation and sustainable development. For example, the forthcoming Rio Plus 20 negotiation process. Assessing recent performance of multilateral negotiations against goals on each of those tracks suggests that our approach requires, at the very least, a patch upgrade. The good news is that a patch is available. Multidimensional approaches such as public-private partnership, networks, social entrepreneurship, all bring new delivery tools to the table. Specifically, to support existing multilateral and national processes and make practical progress on core sustainable development issues such as food security and sustainable agriculture, sustainable energy for all, security, water security and decent job. All those issues can be addressed and solved by innovative initiatives. The World Economic Forum has over 50 project, projects and initiatives in those areas. As I outlined at the beginning, the world has made great progress. The walls between public and private sectors are disintegrating. It is evident that the challenges we face cannot be met by financial firehouses again, alone. The input of management, and here I'm so pleased to be in a school which teaches management, the input of management, technology, innovation, entrepreneurship are the solutions which are needed. This also requires embedding the notion of corporate social global citizenship into the genes of every enterprise. We all, government, business, civil society, and particularly academia, are trustees of our global community. I'm very proud of this honorary degree, and I'm equally proud that the World Economic Forum has been a pioneer of such innovative concepts as sustainable measurements of uh, competitiveness, multi-stakeholder responsibility, public-private partnership, social entrepreneurship, and corporate global citizenship. In short, we need a new paradigm shift which reflects the motto of the World Economic Forum since its beginning, entrepreneurship in the global public interest, which means entrepreneurship, management, entrepreneurial management is the driver of economic progress, the sole driver of economic progress. But it has always to be at the service of global society. I know that Jula Long Khan University strongly and particularly the school reflects its new paradigm and I'm therefore deeply honored to now count myself one of your newest alumni and I should say one 
of your best ambassadors. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for this prestigious honor. I invite Professor Dr. Klaus Martin Schwab, Chulalongkorn University President and the Chairperson of the University Council to take a group photo, please. May I invite Professor Dr. Tamsak Krishnamara to come onto the stage for a group photo, please, Professor? And, um, and also the Vice President, Assistant Professor Dr. Mom Rashawong Kalaya Tingsapat, and Dr. Pongsak Huntagrun, please, to join in the group photo. This concludes the conferment ceremony. We now invite our distinguished guests to proceed to room 111 and join us in a reception in honor of Professor Dr. Klaus Martin Schwab. Thank you.